The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, we're on the second page here, the doctrine of rebound. And at the bottom of uh, Roman numeral seven, we'll look up a couple of scriptures. In the meantime, uh, this is your opportunity to uh, evaluate yourself. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So it is imperative that the believer uh, rebounds when they need to and keep as short accounts as possible. Uh, this is a, a, a sound doctrine that is not widely known and taught in churches, and it will completely hamstring you spiritually if you are not actively involved in the utilization of 1 John 1.9 uh, throughout the day and here in Bible class so that you can be in sync with God the Holy Spirit who has taken up residency in our bodies and fills the believer with the spirit when we are in fellowship. Otherwise, we are quenching or grieving God the Holy Spirit. So it's time to settle down and uh, re recognize that in the teaching of the word of God, uh, some things will hit you uh, and might not be pleasant. That's not the point. The point is, is, that the, is it the truth? And if it's the truth, then you can uh, take your lumps and uh, make whatever adjustments in your thinking and along the way, get the human viewpoint out. Dump it. I have uh, up here, I'm presenting to you how you are to live your life in the world in which we find ourselves that is increasingly entering into gross human viewpoint and stupidity uh, and is clueless. They are, like I said, asleep and drunk in the, in the darkness. Let us pray. Again, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the wherewithal, the protection, so that we can assemble ourselves together, come apart from our daily concerns, so we can focus on your word and your plan, which will, in the end, be validated and vindicated to the nth degree. Bless our time together in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, we looked at this one, put off the old man. Uh, the background to that, of course, is the doctrine of the old sin nature, a very extensive doctrine that is very important and essential so you and I can understand our makeup, that we continue after salvation to possess our sin nature, and it continues to exert its influence on the real you, the soul, the sin nature is in the DNA. So you can't, you can't get rid of it, you can't anesthetize it, but what you can do is you can build up the inner man, the new man, that's the human spirit, so that you have the uh, sense to, uh, one, not engage in certain activities that are sinful, and two, uh, that you can apply. Uh, so it's the old self, the old man of Ephesians 2, 22. Uh, uh, that in reference to your former manner of life, pre-salvation, uh, I'm reading Ephesians 2, 22, you lay aside the old you, the old, I mean, excuse me, the old, the old self, the old man, the old self is the Adamic sin nature. Under the subject in systematic theology called hamartiology, the study of sin. 
And that you can go to the doctrine and look up the synonyms and the different verses dealing with the sin nature. Uh, so anyway, uh, <clears throat> which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. People who follow the sin nature and the lust, the sin nature has a lust pattern, has an area of weakness, a lust pattern. We've noted that it involves approbation lust, materialism or money lust, power lust, sex lust. These areas of the STA, the whole world is largely fueled by the lust pattern of the STA. The lust of the world, there's a verse, they're passing away. It doesn't look like it today, but they are passing away. There'll be, it'll all become passe, operating under some area of the lust pattern. Some people have wonder lust. They can't stay in one place. They gotta be moving around all the time. You see these different manifestations in humans. <clears throat> and all of us have one and we have different areas of strength and weakness. We are to put off the old man. The other scripture I like a lot on this, in this regard, is Hebrews uh, 12.1. It's, Hebrews 11 is widely familiar to, well, to us, but it talks about the heroes of the faith. Beginning with Abel and coming down the line of Old Test the Old Testament crowd. These are the people that made their mark in the angelic conflict. By faith, they arrived at a state in the conclusion of their life, they, they found approval. So they're in what we'll call the Hall of Fame. Now it doesn't include every believer, it couldn't. You, you, we'd be here forever studying all of them, but the, the notable ones that the author here has listed uh, in this listing, this chronological listing of the history of these believers. Faith is used in this chapter in the active sense of believing. And under a whole variety of circumstances, they <clears throat> were put into, they excelled. And they are in the found approval, we would say today, they're in the crowd that are crown worthy. They haven't got their rewards yet. <laughs> they haven't got their resurrection body yet. They're gonna have to wait seven years after we get ours. But they will be completely, they are completely recorded here uh, at certain highlights of their career where they made some outstanding application, often under duress, they did something. You can't do that if you're not locked into the truth and God's plan, you're just flopping around out there, making, making, uh, making the wrong decisions, running your life the wrong direction. Most of the human race won't even get saved. Somebody's tell me about a guy, oh, he's rich. He wasn't bragging about he was. He says, you know, he's rich, he's got, uh, this real expensive uh, collection of whatever it was and several homes and he's now he's, an eight, he's 80, he's got throat cancer. Okay. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, all this comes to my mind. I did, uh, this was not a person on doctrine, this is just somebody that, uh, that, I, that I run into every, about every week, it's my clothes salesman. And I said, uh, you know, these rich people, I, they got all this money, right? They could do all this research instead of just throwing their, their cells into the medical establishment and letting them cut away on their throat or whatever they do. And I pointed out to him that, uh, and I pointed this out to my, one of my doctors, he just went like this. Because it flies in the face of everything he's been taught. 
I said, if you get your pH alkaline by eating alkaline foods and alkaline water, get the list. These are the acidic, these are the alkaline. Eat nothing but that. And test your saliva the first thing in the morning on pharmaceutical grade litmus paper. If it's yellow, you're sick. Green's in between. If you get it over into the blue category, by eating the right foods, you'll starve the cancer cells out. They cannot survive in an alkaline environment. And a doctor figured this out. And it's a book called Death by Diet. You might find it on Amazon. I got me another copy. But I have two, two acquaintances, one a pastor, one a member of another church up there that both had cancer. And they were told what they needed to do. One, it was lung, the other was in the throat. I got, I, got, I got the one, the book. The other one got it through another member of my church. My, 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 other, my one friend, he went back to the VA three months later, had a clean bill of health. He told the doctor what he did. The doctor didn't like it. They were schooled a certain way. It works. You say, oh, I don't. And I, and I, told, I told the people, well, why wouldn't you try it? That's, that information's free of charge. They know a lot of these things. The word cure isn't in their vocabulary. It's called manage. So why don't these, why don't these rich people get somebody, say, I'm gonna pay you good money. You get out there and find all the natural so-called cures for this. I got diabetes, I got whatever I got. Why don't you, why don't you get out there and find this out? You and I can pray about it. Of course, you, can't, you, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink the old saying. Some people are just stubborn. But other people, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check into this. You, you can do it. You can research it. There's ways to deal with these things. Do you know God has put all these plants and other minerals and other things, squirreled them away in all these different countries? Go into these countries that don't have any of the above and find out what they're consuming. <coughs> Study it. This one guy says up in the Himalayas, he says old, old people, like in their 80s, he says they can walk up and down mountains. They have big walks they go on and they drink a tea, one cup of it, I think every morning. So this guy broke it down and analyzed what was in it. It's all natural. And he says, I can, I, I can, I, uh, this, this will, we'll see. This will restore uh, if, you're, if you're suffering arthritis versus taking this, this, and this. I don't know. The ones I look at, usually they will sell you these things. And all I've ever seen is, if you don't, if you don't see any results in 60 days, we'll give you all your money back. So you, you, you can do research on these things. You don't have to live with some of this. <clears throat> All right. Those are the heroes of the faith of Old Testament times. And all these things. You know, the Exodus generation, they, exer they exercised faith and they, get, they, they, they passed through the Red Sea by faith. That was, a, that was a high point for them. And after that, it was not too good. Hebrews, tw uh, Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses... These are, the, these are the heroes of Old Testament times. We have this cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin nature, that's what that means, which so easily entangles us, get caught up under our sin natures. And that as a result of this, let us run with endurance the race this is, this, is, this is taken from, from uh, competition, uh, track and field, uh, the running part. Let us run with endurance. This would indicate a race that isn't a sprint. It's a, it's a, it's a long, long, a long run. 
And so endurance, as we, as we move along, the race <clears throat> that is set before us. That's what I do up here. I set the race before you. Do with it what you will. A lot of people collapsed, gave up, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't comply with, with what uh, uh, this doctrine or that doctrine. The race is being set before you every time you come to Bible class. What the rules are, what the ground rules. In all sports, there, there has to be rules. Only in this stupid country are we starting to violate it by putting men in women's sports. I wouldn't, I wouldn't coach. I wouldn't be within 100 miles of that. And if I was an athlete, a female, I'd say, I'm not doing this anymore. As long as you have one guy in here. So they had some big race up, at, up in Illinois, and two guys won it and crushed and broke the records. And oh, big deal. We're sick. We've lost our minds. Let us run with endurance the race set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. That's the eyes of the soul. Occupation with Christ. It's a doctrine. He's, a, he's the one you need to get the approbation of. He's the one that holds all the power and is going to be at the top forever and nothing comes close to it. Not on people, on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him. You see the set before in verse 12, verse 1? He learned and grew as a man, as, an, as, a, as a human being, he grew and realized what his destiny was, his ultimate destiny. Resurrection, glorification, seen at the right hand and being and ruling over the nations and the kingdom. That was the joy set before him. That's why he went through what he went through because he knew what was on the other side. He went through all the abuse, all the rejection, and then the ordeal of crucifixion, bearing sins, all of it. You know, they slapped his face. They spit on him. It didn't shake him. He didn't tap into his deity and lay them all low. The only time he knocked anybody down was when they came out to arrest him. And then it, it, they're doing everything illegal. They come out at night with torches and have a trial at night. That's all, all, all illegal. The arrest party all came out there and in a second, he sat them all down on their backsides. Every one of them fell to the ground. I think I'd leave then. I don't think I want to be a part of this. But this is how people shake things off. There's, you know, anyway, the joy set before him is his glorified God-man status and all that comes out of that. All of it, everything, the whole future from his resurrection on. That's the joy set before him. Endured the cross. He went through the ordeal of crucifixion, which I understand was a very bad thing for a person to experience. <laughs> you don't have to explain that. Despising the shame. What's that mean? The shame if he had failed, if he had dropped the ball, if he had done something that, inter, that, that, that threw this off. And he had, he had the temptation to tap, to tap into his deity. He made the statement that he could summon two legions of angels. They would have come just like that and laid all these people screaming and yelling uh, <clears throat> for blood, he could have laid them all low. But that's not the plan. These people individually will be dealt with in their own time. He despised the shame of, I've taught you that for those who fall short at the judgment seat of Christ, 
they are going to experience a major amount of shame. He despised the shame, the shame of him failing. You see, in his humanity, his deity can't sin, but his humanity could have. Yeah. So he was, test, he was tempted in all manner like you and I are. And has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God the ultimate position in all the universe, the right hand. That's the, that's the side of preeminence. The father sent his son into the world and told him to sit at his right hand in his final ascension from the Mount of Olives. You sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. We're gonna bring all the enemies down in all of human history. And then the big show, of course, is the trib and the second advent and the judgment of the nations and the establishment of the millennium and on and on until every last enemy from a demon to a human is brought, brought down. For consider him, Christ, who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself. And he did nothing but good for these people. In his public ministry, he did nothing but good. He healed their kiddos. He healed them. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is not a time, people, to lose heart. To be so discouraged because you got your eyes on the wrong thing. It's easy to do. You get your eyes on all the bad stuff that's out there, and I could spend a Bible class after Bible class just the, the awful stuff I've heard in the last 24 hours that's going on in the world. Keep praying for Israel. These are not regular soldiers. These are monsters. Regular soldiers have, have, have an ethic and they don't go in and dismember people and rape them and throw their parts all around. They, they filmed this before the UN recently because the UN hasn't come out against it. Well, they finally did after a number of weeks. You will, you will be hard pressed to find anything more disgusting than what they did to those, so those, those Jewish civilians. From babies up the ladder, it's, it's almost too much to even tell anybody about. See, these Hamas, they won't come out like real men and face the Jews face to face in battle. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be knocked down. So this is the way they have to do. Use their own people as shields. Hide, all, hide their big deals in these tunnels under the schools and hospitals and other places where civilians are. The Jews are going in there and taking it down. I heard today that they're, they're seriously thinking about filling all those tunnels up with seawater. They got the northern area pretty well conquered. They found one of their main centers and they're beating it into the ground. They find out where it's at and they call in the Air Force. See, Hamas doesn't have Air Force. I don't think they even have tanks. So these are enemies, and these enemies are gonna be brought low. As people do, so they're gonna reap, I've been told. And they are going to be taken down. And don't get caught up in the, with the poor civilians. They live in that country. They allow these people to rule over them. And some of them even participated in the debauchery. Civilians, with the soldiers in there, mutilating people. Yeah. So what does the Parliament of Ireland do? Thank you. They've got Palestinian flags all around, all over the, over the, on the top of their parliament for, for seven days. What? Oh, you're gonna honor Hamas for seven days? 
Ireland's lost their marbles too. Ireland. It's so clear that what Israel is doing is a just war. There's unjust wars and just wars. This is a just one, if there ever was one. Israel, I think, has exercised a lot of restraint with regard to these people. Constantly shooting rockets over into Israel. People live with that and see that going through the air. I think they've exercised a lot of restraint, but don't listen to the United States and take their advice. You need to back off now. No. You got them on the mat, you finish it out. Just like an Old Testament war. Read your Old Testament. And, you know, in warfare, when one country attacks another, civilians get killed. You can't protect every one of them. They're cursed by association with these monsters. One of the big Jewish officials says, we're going after the Hamas that are in the other countries, living, living, living the good life. We're going to go take them down. Pray for Israel. Brenda said she went by a Baptist church today. They had little Israeli flags all around the base of their church. Well, okay, fine. Showing that their support is for Israel. Well, we do it through our teaching. Our detailed teaching. Because we understand the significance of the Abrahamic covenant. And God always keeps his word. And Israel is going to go through the worst time in their history and they're going to come out smelling like a rose. Only believers. Obviously, Jewish unbelievers, they, they're doomed just as quick as any Gentile. Rebound in the Old Testament. It was taught through the sin and trespass offerings. They had a couple offerings. They're, they're, they're laid out in Leviticus chapter 4 and 5 and the, the things they had to do to this. The... Uh, the, the this covered two types of sins. As you go through your day, you, you may, as a believer, commit sins that you don't realize are sins. It hasn't been pointed out to you. Oh, that's a sin of the tongue? Oh, okay. Gossip, you know, maligning, cursing, silly talk, uh, and all the rest. So they're unknown sins. Through the study of Bible doctrine, that list can shrink for you. And trespass, known sins. They had a name for each of them. Of the Leviticus 4 and 5. Uh, point, sub point B, it was taught via the bronze laver. This was a laver. There's debates as to what it was actually like. Some just think it's a basin made of bronze. Some things actually had little turn things on it. Uh, they could make stuff like that and little spigots and you go up and there's water in it and it's made of bronze. However, further research might reveal, but the, the point is that the priest was to rinse him, his feet uh, before he went into the, most, into the holy place uh, to do his daily duties. Cleaning the wicks up on the uh, 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 the, the, the candle, the, the 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 seven golden candle, the menorah. I understand Jews today are are reticent to put their menorahs out and around uh, around uh, around Christmas time because they don't want to advertise who they are. And some places won't put them up now. These are the Jews out in captivity. God is stirring them up. How would you like to, how would you like the, the, uh, to be in some of these places where all these stupid people are out pro-Palestinians and be fearful that uh, Jewish because you're Jewish. So anything that would mark you off as Jewish, the deal on your head, anything. 
or you, you teach and they know you're a Jewish person or whatever your position is. The Jews in, the Jews in Ontario and the Jews, I think in DC, they, they wanted to uh, have a rally and they uh, hired uh, a company to bring buses out there to take them to the rally. They paid in advance. The buses never showed. They left them there. See, this is, this is, this is what's going on. What, how, how they're attacking the uh, racially chosen people. Jews have a whole thing. These are countries you definitely do not want to visit now. The whole thing is to show them you're in the wrong place geographically. You need to get back to the land. And we're going to see more and more migrating back to the land. The land that promised to their ancient ancestor that everyone says isn't theirs and they're occupiers. Well, they've been occupying it for a damn long time. Who, who was there in 70 AD and before? Jews. Who came out of Babylon and there were all those centuries? All of it, Jews. So this is a big deal in the angelic conflict. We we'll get, we'll get to see it unfold. Uh, uh, so it, uh, the also rebound was, see, all, these, all, these, all this ritual in the Old Testament takes a while to appreciate it. We studied it back in the day. I feel good about that. But I can't go over it again. The daily trimming of the wicks on the golden lampstand, where you have these wicks coming up, they inevitably get black stuff on and fall down and dim the light. So they have, one, they have to add oil. They used oil and the wicks got funky, and they had to clean this up. And this, we are, you know, as a believer, you are a light in the world. If it's dimmed or not visible, remember this when you're out in your job or in the cause, you're a witness to the truth. You may get an opportunity to present it to somebody in some regards. But apart from evangelizing people, there's also the witness of the life. They see you. They see how you handle yourself. Rebound is not to be taken as a license to sin. This is the... Uh, main object, uh, objection, that's one of the main objections you get to this doctrine. Oh, you're just giving people a license to sin. I, I just, I've almost lost my patience with that kind of mentality. But guess what? Here's, here's Paul says, we've, we're, our doctrine gets misrepresented. Mine has. And, uh, and why not say, as we are slanderously reported and as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may come. Their condemnation is just. I never told you. Rebound. Because when you, when you rebound, good comes. You're back in fellowship. And I never told you to sin to further illustrate the grace of God. I never encouraged it, ever, <coughs> that I know of, not in my teaching. So that, 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 doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't wash. Once you establish the fact that after salvation, good believers continue to sin, what are they to do? Keep rebound close to you and all you got to say is, Father, I confess that. Before the words are out of your mouth, you're back in fellowship. He forgives it instantly. Small sins, little sins, big sins. I don't need to encourage people to sin. They'll do it all on their own, with their own sin nature. <laughs> well, I can just do that and rebound. Yes, you can, but you're not being smart. But okay, rebound. That some believers will abuse the doctrine in no way detracts from its validity. 
Believers abuse a lot of doctrines from time to time. Uh, chapter 6, uh, 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may increase? Meganoito, that's the Greek there. That's, we could translate, no way. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? I explained this in Romans. I explained the theology behind it. When we made the salvation adjust, adjustment, for the first time, our sin nature was shut down. Now, being a new believer, you're going to sin real quick because you don't know much. But I wasn't taught that. I was not taught that. <clears throat> And I can see how they could take that verse and make a mess out of it. Uh, I, never, I never heard him say where I went that taught sinless perfection. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Again, meganoito. The believer must deny the STH lust if he or she is to make the maturity adjustment. And, there's a, and, I, and I, I listed all the different kinds of lust that people are into. Uh, anything that, even legitimate things, that interfere with you getting in the right kind of church and getting on board with the plan of God. You have to make some sacrifices. <clears throat> you have to, you have to uh, deny yourself things that are otherwise legitimate because they interfere with your ability to assemble and be a part, uh, a viable part of a local assembly. <clears throat> First Peter 2.11. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers. Now, the believers to whom this letter was written, the geographical area they were in, is specified in the opening lines, the opening chapter, the beginning of this book, to the saints in this, these areas. And aliens and strangers means not aliens and strangers in the sense of uh, someone from another country being in another country. No, it means we are aliens and strangers because we don't fit in with the cosmos system when we're, run, when we're running on all cylinders. I know that can be misunderstood. We still go to job. We still go, to, we still go grocery shopping. We, we do all these things, but we are... We are aliens and strangers. We're like we were put in here because of what's in our souls and how we, how we process and think about things, what's important and what isn't. For some, it's a career and getting rich and getting ahead and having a name and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you can do those things and not violate NPR, most pressing responsibility, the intake of doctrine, then fine. But if it violates that, then you need to make a change. I've given you the illustrations in the Bible of the great believers. They were willing to drop whatever it was and do what they had to do. If your job got in the way, your job's in the way. If whatever it is. I've taught it till I'm blue in the face. But I'll continue to make a point of it. To abstain from fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. Your lust pattern wages war against the soul. See, it's a perfect breakdown. The sin nature isn't in the soul. The soul is up here. It has volition. The sin nature is putting pressure on it to conform to some area of lust. You can't help it. The sin nature wages war. Sometimes it's not noted a lot. And Paul even says in one place, I can't cite it right now. He said, even in my early days when I was studying, even studying the Bible, the Bible stirred up my SDA. You know, you don't need to go out here and do whatever to get your STA stirred up. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. 
He's writing to Gentiles. He's not writing to Jews. So that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they're going to attack you. They, 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 because of your good deeds, as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. God hears these people when they're running their mouths, saying this and saying that. Now they can do it online. Now they can have a, you know, they can do it on Facebook and go off on all this stuff they want to. Just continue to do what is right and uh, it'll take care of itself. However, the believer should rebound immediately uh, upon sinning to lessen the divine discipline. Now, the example in Psalm 32 is a big time one because it just doesn't involve everyday sins, as you know from that Psalm written by David. This is, this is based on being forgiven. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. I'm reading verse one. Whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. He's straightforward. He's not playing any games. When I, his own testimony, kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't tell us what his sin is. We have to go in there and find out that his sin was his extramarital affair with one Bathsheba. And when he got her pregnant, that wasn't, that wasn't what he wanted to do. But hey, that happens. <laughs> he, 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 he finally, long story short, he... Uh, gets rid of her husband. Not personally, one-on-one. -on -one. He sets him up in battle. A, a loyal soldier. This is really dastardly. Right? And he says that when I kept silent about my sin and I didn't come for, forth with it, see, he tried to cover it up. But he got busted. Oh, he had a court prophet name of Nathan who confronted him with it. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away. Weight loss. Through my groaning all day. See, he didn't push the rebound button in a timely fashion. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. Because first and foremost, he sinned against God. And my iniquity, I did not hide. I said, here, here it is. He's talking to himself. I said to myself, it's called volition. I said to myself, I'm going to confess this. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you in a time when you may be found. You can't push this on forever. Surely in a flood of great waters, they will not reach him. And then he goes on to say, you're my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. David had a lot of enemies. You preserve me from trouble. Do you look to the world to preserve you? I look to the Lord. Whatever happens and a believer goes through, God is there for me. I don't care. Well, this could be coming down in America and this. Shut up. I don't want to hear it. It doesn't matter. God's still going to take care of me. He isn't, he isn't bound by the conditions within a society or civilization, however bad they get. Job says, I laugh at, they, one of Job's friends says, you laugh at these things. If I need something, I got the source. I just ask God. Instead of acting, you know, falling apart. You surround me with songs of deliverance.
I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose trappings include bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. Many are the sorrows, many are the sorrows of the wicked. Oh yeah, I hear it all the time. The wicked represent unbelievers first, who don't, who, who don't, their, their trust is in money or whatever it is. And these people that you think live in the, the high life out there, you just see the overt person in a fancy car, in a big house. You don't see the half of it. The sorrows of the wicked are many. But he who trusts in the Lord, loyal love shall surround him. Do you need something? You trust in God. You're under some threat, you trust in God. And whatever they're predicting is going to happen, and they're going to predict a whole bunch of stuff. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. And in conclusion, uh, we already cited that one verse. John 13, 8, Jesus answered, Peter, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. If you don't use rebound and continue to use it and apply it, then you're going to be cut short when the final evaluation comes. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in Christ's name.